So in this video, we're going to specifically look at how to um, play around with the idea of RSA encryption in MATLAB, and we're going to do it on really small numbers, um, although I suppose you're just limited by whatever your version of MATLAB can handle or whatever kind of code you're using can handle. So um, this is not intended to be like hardcore encryption. This is just like trying to learn how encryption works. So in another video, we talked about how RSA works, and the idea is you have this public key. Um, well, actually, two, you would say E and N are public. And then you're going to keep um, D private. And so in our example, E and N were 100 and, or 7 and 143, and D was my private key, which was 103. And so over here, we had a little dude who was like trying to send me a secret message. And so he did 3 to the 7 mod 143, got 42. And then he could put up a 42, and then I could go down into my secret basement, and I could use my secret 103 number to um, work this out and get um, 3. And get his secret message back. So um, the the way that um, what's this place called um, RSA does it is with this stuff right here and with this stuff right here, and that's that's all there is to that. Now, one of the things that we had to create was a special um, modulo function. And so, if you don't already have this, if you want to play this game, you have to use this. So, if I did um, like just normally in MATLAB, if I said what is the modulo of 42 to the 103 mod 143, MATLAB says 13 um, because MATLAB is dumb. Um, it's not because it's dumb, it's just that 42 to 103 is just so big that it can't work. This is a known issue and eventually no matter what software you're using at some point, it's potentially going to explode. So in order to avoid explosions, um, what, we're going, what we did is we had to write this power mods function. So instead of putting the 42 and the 103 as a single argument, I put in power mod where I had the base was 42, the exponent was 103, and the mod value was 143, and then it came back with the three as necessary. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna create a function called encrypted message. Um, and it's not a very interesting function. It's going to have those three inputs, um, the message, the um, E and the N value. So I would have to give um, the E and the N value to whoever wanted to do this. Now it's kind of silly because the um, M to the E mod N is equal is the encrypted message. So it's M to the E mod N. It looks a little weird because it's a double percent sign. But essentially, that just means that the encrypted message is going to be that power mods thing, where it's M, E, N. So this looks like a kind of a stupid function because it's just basically exchanging the word encrypt for power mods. But I'm trying to give you like the kind of the point and showing you. Like if you wanted, you could hard code these numbers in. But then every time you changed your public or private keys, you'd have to go manually change that. So I think it's okay just to assume that they know it. So when you save this, just make sure you save it as encrypt. And then the same thing for your decrypted message. Why are you yelling at me? Did I not spell that the same way? Oh, I didn't. I forgot an R in encrypted. Oh, okay. That'll work now. Now it's happy. Okay. So then I can do function um, decrypted message. And it's, again, going to be the C to the D mod N. So I'll call it decrypt C D N. Um, and so my decrypted message would be the power mod. So I guess it's good for you to use the power mods because, you know, your user might try to just use the built-in mod function. This way it kind of forces them to do that. So C to the D mod N. And so that's the return there. And we can save that again as decrypt. Just to make sure that this is working, I want to encrypt the number 3. And my um, E is 7, and my N is 143. And it should come back as 42. And then I'm going to decrypt it, and blah, where I'm going to decrypt the message. I'm going to send it the encrypted message. And again, um, the D is 103, and the N is still 143, and it should come back with the original answer, 3. All right, so those are my encryptions and my decryptions. The fun part, I guess, is to figure out um, how to actually generate these keys to begin with. So um, there's there's just a ton of ways to do it. Um, I'm going to go function, E, N, and D. So I need an E, and an N, and a D, and I'm going to call this my generate key function. 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and save it as generate key. Now, um, to start, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the user, or how did I do it? I think, let me see. Okay, I picked specifically P equals 11 and Q equals 13. Let me just do that for the moment um, so that I can make sure I'm getting the same kinds of answers that I was using. Because I always like to do, anytime you're doing functions for the first time, you always want to make sure that um, you kind of work the problem out by hand so you know that it works. All right, so let's see what our strategy is here. Alrighty then. So um, we've got n is going to be equal to p times q. Um, and I'm just going to assume that the user is smart enough to know that those need to be prime. Um, phi is going to be equal to p minus 1 times q minus 1. Derp, derp, derps. All right, now we need an e such that it's less than phi and these two things are coprime. So you kind of got to think about what does coprime mean? Um, the coprime, two things are coprime if they don't share any primes in, or any multiplications in column, uh, any factors in common. And if you kind of think back to or whatever fourth grade it was or something like that, they taught you um, GCD or the greatest common denominator. So what we need to know is that for whatever E it is that the GCD of E and V are coprime. So we can say, all right, so I'm going to let E start at 2, because it can't start at 1, and it can go all the way up to phi minus 1. And um, I might say something like, if the GCD of E and phi is 1, then I know it's coprime, because the GCD is 1, because I just said that. Because <laughs> the GCD of phi and E is equal to 1, then that's good. And I can just break out of my for loop. So, um, so I'll have a nice value for E. And I think that's probably how I got E to begin with. I'm going to just run this code here separately just to play and see if that's what I ended up with. Um, I'm going to run this right here. I think that's how I got, oh, thank you. Just tell me what E is. E is 7. Okay, that's where I got my 7. Yay, 7. Okay, so you can go away. Now I go back here. Um, now the next thing that I need is I need to have a D um, where um, D, E, D is congruent to 1 mod phi. All right, so I kind of have to do the same thing uh, where I just kind of keep increasing the value until I get to where I need to be. So um, probably I'm going to find some kind of D. So let's say that d starts at one again or two one i guess i could start at one that would be d would have to be something that couldn't happen so i'm just gonna start at two so t can go from two all the way to gosh i don't even know how big that number could be let's i'm, I'm sure there's a, a way for me to figure this out i'm betting it can't get any bigger than that okay yes i just had to i had to check <laughs> to be sure but yes B um, is, I mean, you can clearly go above that, but um, like you could just do multiples of it, um, mod B, but um, it doesn't need to be any bigger than that. So I can just leave it at that. And I can kind of do the same thing that I did um, before and just say, okay, well, if um, the mod, and this way I can just use the regular mod, I can't use my power mod because I'm not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not, <laughs> I got all distracted. I not raising anything to a power. So I need that e times d has to be equal to 1 modulo phi. So I can say something like if um, e times, or the modulo of e times d uh, mod phi is equal to 1, then again, that's, can't spell, <laughs> good. And I can break, and, and there we go. So that would generate my e and my D values. And so let's see if I plug in um, the Q and the 13, I should get these same values out. So um, remember, whenever you're running a function, you've got to ask for its outputs. You don't have to call them E, N, and D. Um, and just to show, prove that, I'll call it eval, N val, and D val. And I'm going to ask it to generate the key. And hopefully, oh, it's going to yell at me. Why are you yelling at me? What'd you yell at me for? 
Oh, you yelled at me because I don't know how to type. Um, there's supposed to be a thingy there. There we go. All right, so that gave me the 7, the 143, and the 103. So that's how I did it last time. Yay, it works. Now, what are some things? And, and if you want to kind of run it, you can say, all right, so if, um, actually, let me do this over here. So what I'm not retyping this over and over and over because apparently I can't type. So I'm going to make a little script. Um, and remember, a script isn't like a function because it's just like literally typing this out every time. So if I can control enter, it just runs this for me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this practice. So um, the idea is that I could then, um, my secret message, I could ask the user, so what's your secret message? Now, secret, no, secretly, um, I'd have to know that their secret message has to be small. <laughs> so I can just tell them a small number, please, because remember, it has to be less than P or Q. And right now, my P and Q are like 11. So um, I'll ask specifically for a string. No, a number. Sorry, not a string, a number. So give me a secret message. And um, then, you know, I can say, um, you know, encrypted thingy is going to be, I'm going to encrypt the message to be, um, I have to send it the encrypted message. And then it needs to know the E value and it needs to know the N value. So I'm kind of also doing this just to show you that you don't have to call them E and N. You can just say anything you can call it, you know, blubber, pizza, and chicken or something like that. And it still works. Um, and then I can say something like encrypted message. And then I can just display the encrypted thing like that. And then you could do something dramatic. I don't know, like a pause for two seconds and be like, I don't know. I shall decrypt it for you. And then I would need to decrypt thingy. Um, so decrypt um, the encrypted thingy. But the decryption needs to have the D value and the N value. All right, so be like, ta da! and then display the decrypted thingy. All right, so this should work. We'll see. And um, woohoo! All right, so I'm gonna run this. I'm just gonna hit Control Enter. So I'm gonna send a secret message of three and it should go to 42. And then it comes back as three. Yay! All right, um, hopefully it'll work if I give it a slightly more complicated. Remember, it still has to be less than 11 or 13, so let me get um, nine. So 9 gets encrypted to 48, and it comes back as 9. Awesome.